Hello, welcome magic lovers for this week's 1v1 commander. I'm trying out the new Guilds of Ravna commander, Aurelia, the four random beater um, with semi haste. It gives something plus two, plus zero. Um, trample and vigilance if it's white. Um, trample if it's red, vigilance if it's, if it's white. Um, so I decided to go with a heavy creature based strategy. There are some non-creature spells but for the most part tons and tons of creatures and unlike the zozu deck um by adding the white i get tons of really good one drops so we shouldn't run out of one drops we should have a one drop in most games I, i'd hope um and then uh we went real light on the four drops because we've got this four drop right here um so we want to like curve out and then cast aurelia and uh, have some creatures already in play um, and uh, hopefully I'm trying out bone splitter as a cheap way to um, make everything into a pretty serious threat I don't I don't know if it's very good or not but uh, figured I'd grip give it a try we got a couple ways to go and get it relic seeker and uh, of course stoneforge mystic um, and then uh, Umazawa's jit I don't know we uh We'll try it out. We'll see how it does. I got a game. I am on the draw. And I don't have a one drop. But I don't think I can mulligan this. I guess we'll keep it. It's pretty slow. Playing against Vendillion Click. Alright. That's an interesting one. Most of my stuff's pretty replaceable. The exception, of course, of... Well, that's a one drop. The hero blade hold is not not super replaceable. Um, everything else pretty replaceable. Um, let's just play the plains bone splitter. Gonna four spike my bone splitter. Mental misstep. All right, didn't need to crack your land for that. Peek at my hand. Thalia is pretty good. Alright, let's just, uh... Drawing another land wasn't too great. Alright, this guy... I got a selective... Target player. Let's do this pre-combat. Forbid. Okay. So they're going the counterspell route against my super cheap deck. Um... Let's see how well that works. Another land. Let's play the Sunwing. Another counter spell. I kept a slow hand. They've been able to counter spell almost everything. They're down to four. All right. There's all counter spells all the time. Um, shoot, I sh probably shouldn't have done that quite the way I did it. Oh well, 
But Abbot of Carol keeps still fine if I can't cast the spell that I get. Maybe I should have played it first. Teferi. All right. It's a pretty darn good card there. All right, they're going after my hand now. I drew Tajik. Oh, mentor haste. Doesn't quite do it. Let's uh, let's go with Aurelia. Oof. All right, let's go with Sky Marcher. Sheer number of counter spells they've drawn. You can have the dig for time or the counter spell that you can actually cast this turn. Oh. They can gas the Admiral's orders. Ugh. This has not worked out well. Let's go with this one. Normally, counter spells would not work that well against a deck like this. But everything has aligned pretty much perfectly for my opponent. Alright, there's the dig. Attacking with a click. All right, well, I got to try it. Did you draw a counter spell or no? Probably they did. Oh, yeah. Moving on. All right, that was a match, so I'm on the play. So I should get to resolve some things this time. Let's go the Expedition Envoy. The lead, Stoneforge Mystic, the Jit, pretty good against. Let's attack first. Don't know if it really matters. So, play a land, attack, play a noble, all right, mana drain for one, least of my worries.
Cycling Complicate. I'm missing a land drop? Looks like it. All right. If you have four more creatures. All right. Oh, do we have to worry about like mass removal or something like that? Let's tap correctly. Let's do that way. Attack. And play this thing. That's pretty good. All right. All right, so game three of that match. Let's see if we can get out there fast enough. Leap Vanguard. Yeah. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good hand. I suppose I could have done the Bomat career, but, you know, uh, we can actually do that next turn. We can uh, attack, cast two spells. Should be hard for them to count on both of them. All right. Oh, I. Well, my career has haste. I'm dumb. All right, let's attack first. Gonna run out the jet. They could not have countered that faster. That's fine though. Hopefully, they don't have an answer to Aurelia. Uh, they probably do. Bladed Gorge. I gotta run it out anyways. All right, there's counter. Logic not. Nope. Getting some cards under the Bomat career. It's not too bad because we're kind of running out of cards in our hand. Glimmer of genius. That's on their turn. Let's draw something good. That's not what I was quite looking for. Three cards under Bomat Career. All right, say go. Peak. All right, you can have a look at my hand. You can just trade it for these three cards anyways. All right. Gotta keep trying. That's pretty good. Evacuation. All right.
I can click Aurelia back to my hand. That's what they really want to do. Let's play this thing first. Biggest body. Deprive. All right. Got another one. Supreme Will. One land away from casting it again. They had to pick up a land. little funny that I've been able to play this so many times. Four spike, geez. That's just nothing but counter spells, huh? All right, let's attack Bowman Career. All right, there's the click. What are they picking out of my hand? All right, they took the Banisher Priest, but now I got Brimaz. Brimaz, pretty good. See if Brumaz actually resolves. All right, now we got the one red mana up to keep the Bomat career going. Blue Sun Zenith for three. All right, Mishra's Factory. Check with all. I think I want to hit this thing. Yeah, let's let's take that out. Now this has two damage to any target. All right. Pull from tomorrow. Are they dead? Yeah, they're definitely dead. Could even sack the uh, Bowmat career to do even more. All right, there we go. Two out of three, that ain't bad. All right, got another game. I'm on the draw. Got a miss. Turn one Swift Sphere, which I'm not sure how good Swift Sphere is. I don't have that many things that trigger Trawas. Um, turn two Thalia. 
or honored crop champion. I haven't even, what am I playing against? Prosh. All right. I probably want a Thalia to stop any mana ramp. They might be at least non-creature mana ramp. They may have Cultivate or something like that or a Wish Visionary. I mean, I guess a 1-2 haste isn't all that bad, just on its own. It's not super great, though. This gives everything first strike and trample if I attack with it next turn. What do we got here? We got Demonic Tutor. Ooh, that's probably not good for me. I assume that's some sort of mass removal. Hmm. There's only so much I can play around that, though. Alright, they got first strike. And trample. I wish I owned a massacre worm. Yeah, massacre worm would be pretty good, but it's also pretty expensive. And you're only at four mana and oh. Now they're at six five mana. Flame Tongue Kabu. All right. I wonder if that's what they got to deal with the uh, the Thalia and a Fatal Push. Big ouch. All right, let's go for this thing. Because that plus the Legion Loyalist makes my attacks really good next turn. Haven't drawn any lands. Normally, wouldn't really need to, but... Jeez, Prosh is coming down now. I just have not done anything fast enough. Ugh. Like, I don't think I can win this anymore. Four damage to any target. Um, like I need to draw a land and a spell. Like a one of the three mana Oblivion Ring creatures. Swords to Plowshares. All right. I only have one man right mana. All right. Another white mana would be really nice. They can't effectively block with a flame tongue cabu against this set of creatures. They need to remove this thing or this thing. And what do we got here? Eternal Witness, get back Fatal Push. <sighs> I 
Yeah, these little dorky creatures, man. If you catch your foot opponent on the back foot, they're really good. But if you don't... I don't think you have any business attacking with a flame tongue kabu. All right. Like there's so much fast mana, a colorless land. Fantastic. All right. Um, well, let's tack. I guess they can just tack a uh, chump block with all these kobolds forever. All right, that's fine. Let's play this thing. All right, necromancy. Yeah, they're just gonna turn. Yeah, we're. I got another game, or this is the match. This is the same. One lander, one lander, let's mulligan this. We do have a one drop, but all right, this is actually pretty good. Uh, Henweir Garrison, I need another land. Unfortunately, Henweir Garrison is an outstanding card. Probably one of the best in the deck, but I really need another land. Having a Demonic Tutor and Vampiric Tutor back in the format makes it pretty hard for uh, these decks as well. Alright, if you want to block with your land, that's fine by me. Um, because they can just go and get mass removal. Um, that's not what happened this time, but they were able to go and get something that was really good against me. I need another land. We'll play this thing. Number of creatures you control. Okay. My opponent might have kept some awkward lands as well. It's Kura Tri Builder. Alright, that lets them block freely. Land. Land. Okay. Um, yeah, let's pay a light pay some life to make sure we got all our colors. And play this Tajik, which has haste and mentor. So everything's a 2-2 two -two or a 3-2. And block the 3-2, take 4. Now they don't probably don't do well they are in red they might do some non-creature damage so they gotta hit this thing if they've got a lightning bolt or something like that death right all right another land another land Go for our commander. Uh, let's put it all on this thing. Let's mentor this thing. If 
five two trample vigilance pretty good they're down to 14 This thing has flying and mentor. The mentor is making our creatures really big. All right. And now we need to beat them on the draw. It's a pretty good hand. Block dragons as though I had reach. That's a dragon. Protection from dragons. <laughs> That actually matters for once. Soul Ring on turn one. Oh, gross. Um, let's go for the damage of this Dragon Hunter. Death Rate Shaman. All right. Smash to smithereens. All right. I'm gonna, yeah, let's go Thalia. I need to keep them off non-creature ramp. I do have a fetch land in my graveyard though, so they can actually just cast their commander, can't they? Oh, that's so gross. What is this, turn three? Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure they could have cast their commander. So I need an answer, and I need one fast. No, no, Bowden Splitter is it. That's pretty good. But it doesn't really, because of my own. So let's Selfless Spirit, and then tag. And soldier. You can at least put the bone splitter on the dragon hunter and attack with it. Turn four prosh though, pretty gross. Pretty gross. Need a fiend hunter or something like that. So this is where Soul Ring really hurts aggro decks. Uh, this thing has flying as well. Yeah. Um, I probably need to leave Dragon Hunter back to block, honestly. All right, they had a spell that they couldn't cast apparently, I think. All right. Let's cast Aurelia. Doesn't really matter. I'm not attacking with anything. If they answer my Dragon Hunter. I'm actually in a lot of trouble. This makes it a four five. I wish visionary. Removal spell? Dark confidant.
All right, they might not have read this line of text there. It's completely reasonable to assume that they wouldn't have. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> like, when does that ever come up? That seems quite good. And the answer is that never comes up. Alright. Let's put a bone splitter on Aurelia and swing. Probably play the Relic Seeker. Wouldn't mind getting an, a JIT. Seems unlikely that that'll ever work, but it could. Um, I could force him to block with something. Reclamation Sage. All right, well, they can hit the Bone Splitter. the downside of the bone splitter so now we're kind of sitting at parity because I can't attack and they can't attack well they can't attack but I can't if they leave this thing untapped I can't I can't attack into it Eternal Witness, getting back three visits, is that really worth it? I have the Selfless Spirit to uh, protect my hunter. I can't activate that. I can play this though and play this and it doesn't particularly matter does it? Whatever. So Thalia plus the Blighted Gorge means I can, oh Blasphemous Act? Oh, that's a big ouch. Oh, wait, no, I have a selfless spirit. Oh, and they just took all the damage from it. I see. There's the three visits. Yeah, so I might just be able to wait for them to kill themselves with the Dark Confidant. I can't really protect my Dragon Hunter with the Selfless Spirit, though. Because if I do, then the Blasphemous Axe kills me. I can't be Dragon Hunter lol. <laughs> like, when, is, when does that ever happen? It said words that have never been spoken ever before. I can't beat Dragon Hunter. That's hilarious. Alright, I got another game. I'm on the draw again. Um, I have to mulligan this one lander. I have to mulligan this one as well. Alright, it's a hand. Romanap Ruins. Yeah. 
Playing against Joyra. I do not have a love, lot of love for this Joyra game, uh, deck. It was cool the first time I played against it, but every time after that, it's really boring to play against because they just kind of like solo, like they just play solitaire against themselves once they get Joyra in play. Alright, well I got a Fiend Hunter. That's pretty good. I'm going to play the Abbot as a 2-1. A little bit sad to see Brumaz go. Worn Power Stone. Alright, well that's not a good sign because that means they're going to have a lot of mana. that thing even if it means we can't uh, cast handware garrison here killing their mana pretty important yeah that stopped him from casting uh, joy with that turn Been playing a bit of Magic Arena. If you haven't watched my other video by now, and I kind of miss auto tapping already. And granted, Magic Arena isn't built to handle any of the really complex situations that it can occur in a commander game, um, but uh, you know there are occasions where you just like you just want to cast one thing at each turn. Alright, let's Fiend Hunter the heck out of this thing. Bye, Joyra. Um, not that it really matters, but let's put the uh, Loyalist Trigger last. Alright, there's some damage for you. Another land cat recast Joyra for them. Psychosis Crawler. All right. Well, I got to attack with all. I'll lose the hand rear garrison. But it's still a lot of damage. Let's impose them and play the shoulders of the Pantheon. She has protection from multi multicolored. We saw her last game. Sometimes those things come up. Protection from dragons. Not going to get over that one soon. There we go. I just had to kill Joyra once. Alright, got another game. I am finally on the play. Playing against Itali. And I have this hand. Can't cast any of the red spells. Do I mulligan it? Yeah. Just everything goes wrong if I... Ugh. Not a great hand. It's good against Itali, but I need another land. I actually have tons of lands in this deck. It's not like I skimped on the lands. 
Uh, probably no reason to actually fetch that. I reduced my chances of drawing another land by about 1%. It's tiny, but... Porcelain Legionnaire is interesting. Falconrath. Gorger. That's just Legionnaire. Going on magic. Alright, opponent has a Bowmat Courier. Which does not win the fight against the Porcelain Legionnaire. Land. Come on, land. Although I don't really need to land this turn. I guess I could wait another turn. That's pretty good, though. I'm not going to gonna complain about the land. Let's turn this thing into a threat. It's a six turn clock. Uh, we'll play the Gorger. Not going to block the Bowman Courier. Inquisitor's Flail. Creasers and non basic lands. Do it really? Another creature would do combat damage to equip. Alright. <laughs> this thing has madness. I just wanted the 2 1 for 1. So the madness, pretty irrelevant. Alright. That's fine by me. Let's play Thalia here. Don't think they're going to be playing non-basic lands, but if they want to play creatures to block... Oof. There's a Tali. Alright, well let's get in. It's a ton of damage. Maybe we can hit the city's blessing sometime soon. They lost the flip on the mana crypt. Oh, that does a ton of damage. So I guess we're braiding that. Could have waited for them to attack. I should have waited for them to attack. All right, they're still attacking. I got Ash Zealot, which enters the battlefield tapped. Blasphemous axe. Ugh, gross. Alright. At least my commander is pretty good. Pretty hard to hit an X5 in a mono red deck. Not impossible. And this thing does six damage next turn. I can't haste that and because my man is awkward. 
All right. All right, I'm on, uh, got another game. Finally getting some luck with the die rolls. And... I don't know if a 1-1 one, one Bushwhacker... I mean, I guess I keep this hand. Playing against Krufix. Alright, so let's play the uh, fetch land so that we can bolt a bird if we need to. Fully intend to bolt a bird. Alright, they let blue probe. Then Mana Crypt. And an Everflowing Chalice. I lied. I am getting a little bit sick of those things. It wears on you a little bit over time. Where initially I was like, okay, they're fine. It's starting to be like, geez, you just see them all the time. They're so good. Especially turn two crew fix. I guess it's not that great. It's going to be hard to deal with, like all that ramp. They're going to cast something really big in just a couple of turns. And as mentioned a couple of times, it pushes out aggro. Aggro is pretty difficult to make viable. As long as uh, th these kind of cards are available. For somebody to cast a five mana crew, uh, a Hedron Archive? Jeez. Alright, they're all ramp all the time. Alright, that's insane. Hopefully they're just out of cards then. Do you want this jet? Uh, bone splitter is probably better. It's so much mana. I'm gonna get turn three Ulamont. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I technically can get turn three out Olamogd. It doesn't look like they're out of cards. They got something really good. All right, it's a green sun zenith for nine, which is probably a terastodon. Probably just gonna pack it in after this. I don't think I can ever win. Uh, primeval Titan. All right, marginally better than terastodon, I guess. Um, I can actually beat it with a lightning bolt. So, I guess. Maybe I hold out hope that they haven't drawn another card. Alright, Alchemist Refuge and Myriad Landscape. Not world-breaking lands here. Alright, they're not falling for my ruse. All right, let's just say go. Still technically beating a primeval titan. It's 
they got to have another spell. All right, there's Crufix, not active. They can technically draw two cards with this Hedron Archive. Metamorph? Does that activate Crufix? Double Primeval Titan. That's disgusting. Alright, well this is just one of those unbeatable hands, really. Um... I might still be able to, I don't know. It seems unlikely. So many lands. I think I just draw two with the Hedron Archive. It's still possible though. I would not mind drawing another land though. All right, something. I need another red mana to do that again, though. Consecrated Sphinx. Dear Lord. Yeah, no, I, I'm done. All right, I got another game. I am on the draw. Playing against Grand Arbiter. I have a one drop. Don't have a way to kill. Well, Searing Blaze does kill Grand Arbiter. So that's pretty good. Um, Harsh Mentor might matter. Alright. Um... One of these do I want? Probably the damage. Let's go damage. Even if it draws them lands. So, looks like we're up against another controlling deck. So we've got some cheaper things, so that's pretty good. I might try to, so what did we reveal by the way? Command Tower. Mardu Roar, Woe Reaper. All right, let's go for the two one mana things. Just cause I'm trying to get under counter spells and that kind of stuff. All right, another land. Cute. Cycling. Um, there is a definite possibility that there's going to be some wraths or something like that. So, something to consider. At least Aurelia is pretty good post-wrath. Crystal Shard. Alright. Alright, that's pretty good. This is artifact creature or land or artifacts. So artifacts in there. Let's attack with all. Do I play it? Another land. 
Jeez, they're hitting all lands all the time off that. Let's just hope they go for the Grand Arbiter plan. They can't really Crystal Shard because they've got an extra mana up. Alright, they played a Thalia. So, an Indicator there. Um, Fiend Hunter or Searing Blaze? Let's go Searing Blaze. It's not as weak to... Um, the damage to myself doesn't really matter. They could just have a counter spell. They could also have a counter spell for Fiend Hunter. Both things are equally likely. All right. Resolved. Pumps up Monastery Mentor. Gets in a ton of damage. Draws them another land. They've hit a land literally every turn. And they're in nine life. And then we got the mana to get around the crystal shard, and it also costs them two life, so it's worthless to try. We have a fiend hunter to kill their grand arbiter or any other big creature they put in the way. But a Wrath would hurt an awful lot right now. No doubt about that. All right, they are face fettering the Mentor. Gains them four life. All right, let's play the land. Aurelia. Um, trample. If it's red. Alright, let's put it on the Goblin Guide, I guess. Detention Sphere. All right. I don't think that quite gets him out of this. I uh, can't really play the Savannah Lions. They can potentially Grand Arbiter and Detention Sphere. Uh, they can definitely Grand Arbiter and Detention Sphere. But I think they're still dead. They said they got all land and four uh, casting cost, and they pack it in. Um, I don't know why they didn't try the Grand Arbiter. I mean, like, they don't know that I have this removal spell. So Grand Arbiter and then the Detention Sphere. It even leaves up the Crystal Shard. I don't know why they didn't at least try that. It wouldn't have worked, but... Okay, we won another one. I okay, got another match. I'm on the draw again. Got a one drop, got a bone splitter, got a couple of two drops, and posing sovereign. It's typically pretty good. Uh, playing against Yeheni. Uh, so I do have a swords to plowshares as well. Um, let's open up with the uh, plateau envoy. All right, opponent plays Ifner Deadlands, says go. Let's uh, swing. Yeah, 
You know, Bone Splitter, for being one mana and one mana to equip, is surprisingly expensive. I'm not sure it does enough to merit the expense. <laughs> like, you wouldn't think it. It's super cheap, but... I mean, it's pretty good. All right, Monument. Uh, so they can gain life, and I lose life. All right, two damage to target creature. Creature dies this turn. All right, that's pretty good. So it's Vanguard and Militia Captain, which flips on my upkeep to a 4-4. Four four. And at the beginning of my end step, it creates a 1-1. One one. So they kind of need to kill it. I probably should worry about Wrath's Charcoal Diamond. So I guess that's one benefit of the bone splitter here is uh, I'm not committing into a wrath. All right, Abbott. We'll just go uh, bone splitter, put it on something that doesn't matter super lot. An attack. It's a decent amount of damage right there. They're down to 12. I get a 1-1. One, one. And this thing gets bigger. We got the Imposing Sovereign, which keeps Yeheni from doing anything right away. They're doing something with a ton of mana here. I'm not sure that really moves their mana forward, does it? Because that's that's four mana no matter what. Like that's the same amount of mana. Revel enriches. Sacrifice it at okay, yeah, no, they're dead. All right, that was a match. Uh, so I'm on the draw again. This hand looks great. I don't know why it randomly opens and closes things. Look with the commander. It's really weird about that magic online. Um, Stoneford Mystic for a Jit. Jit's even more expensive, but arguably worth it. A Vamp Tutor. Alright, this is on their turn that they're Vamp Tutoring. Not sure why you'd cast Vamp Tutor on your own turn. Unless you have a way to draw that card right now. I mean, I don't have a way to make you shuffle, but... Uh, that is something that could happen. Like, there are ways to force your opponent to shuffle. And you don't draw the card anyways, and uh, you give your opponent more information when you Vamp Tutor on your own turn. Because then I know you Vamp Tutored. I might play something different on my turn as a result. Like maybe I assume you got a Wrath, so I play Stoneforge Mystic and says something else. 
because Stoneforge gets uh, something that's that's wrath proof. Cabal coffers. All right. You sure you wanted to do that? That moves your mana backwards. So they're trying to do something with a ton of mana. Uh, let's just get in. I could have Legion Loyalist. I probably should have Legion Loyalist. All right, let's play the Envoy. Wow, their mana is super awkward right now. All that, and they have two mana. Enters the battlefield tapped. If you gain life this turn, you can cast it from your graveyard. All right. I probably could have just cast that and then uh, attacked with a Stoneforge Mystic. They're not playing counter spells. Um, let's put it on the Sav Lions and attack with everything. Red, white, play this guy. This thing's really good. This deck is really weird. Like, they're not really playing removal. Seems like they're trying to go for some wonky combo and uh, they're nowhere close to it. Um, their mana. Vamp tutoring for Cabal Coffers this early seems really ambitious. I got another game. I'm on the play. All right. Uh, red, white, Armageddon that I can't cast. Hands. Weird. Against Atrada. Can't be bought. Okay, that's the new one. All right. Whatever. We'll we'll try this hand. It's probably wrong. were kind of wrath proof but we're not removal proof one removal spell kills me pretty close yeah. all right well the vampire is pretty good I kind of want to get this gin on the board let's get this jit on the board Land. Land. Alright. Alright, let's put the Jid on the Envoy. Let's attack. We get in. That's great. Uh, yeah, let's pay two life. Let's play the Noble. Um, and then one land and we get a just Armageddon. It's probably asking for too much to get a land. Fabricate. Oblivion Stone. Alright. Let's go on the Armageddon plan. 
Don't have much else going on. Got four counters in this thing. I don't I don't think there's any way to beat this Armageddon. It's possible. All right. All right, I got a game. I am on the play. Hand is pretty keepable. I will lead off with the Sky Marcher. Playing against Atraxa. Um, I have a remo removal for Atraxa. Um, I assume they're going to go with a bunch of Planeswalkers. This Abbot of Care Keep has been awkward. Evolving, uh, evolving Wilds. Not where you want to be against an aggro deck. Ooh. Oh, yes, please. Means I'm not casting Brim Ass. But man, this thing is good. Uh, let's put it on the potential. Fl oh, yeah, sucks. All right. Uh, Not sure how much I love Path to Exile in this format either. That land is a really big drawback. Like giving your opponent a land that's actually quite huge. I'm not as critical against this deck. But each player can't draw. Uh, it's caster commander. I would love to play Brimaz and Spirit of the Labyrinth. Um, let's go Trample versus Vigilance. Seems like there's a high probability they're just going to try and put a Trax in front of all this. But they might go Planeswalker as well. Um, which is where Spirit of the Labyrinth would be pretty good because a lot of those Planeswalkers are going to draw cards. Alright, and there's green. And there's a Traxa. I should have gotten a planes because now I can't All right, let's swords that thing. It's Legion Loyalist. Um, I guess we put it on her. And Mentor, the thing that can potentially be a flyer. Is that a classic dumb luck from a dumb deck? Um, disagree. Alright, it doesn't take too many games to see how the Aurelia deck is going to play out. Um, it's pretty good. It can, do, it can put out damage pretty fast. Um, I think it's probably on power, if not a little bit behind Zergo, as far as potential damage output. And I think, uh, you know, like I said, soul rings and those kind of things, um, the, the super fast mana kind of edges out um, 
aggro quite a bit. Like maybe if we were playing with a lower life total or something like that, but if you look at Duo Commander, they've had to ban Zergo and a couple other uh, commanders because of their lower life total. And there's even been some controversy over the lower life total. So I don't know if that's really the way to go with it, um, but it's, it's hard to play aggro these days. Um, but, you know, I thought that was a pretty interesting deck. And uh, I think, you know, me playing it for two or three days, just is just going to get a little bit repetitive. You're going to see the same things over and over again. Um, so what I thought I would do instead is play a different deck with Aurelia as the commander. Just totally switch up the deck. Um, so I will have a part two of this tomorrow, but it's going to be a totally different build. And then I actually think I'm going to do a part three the following day. I have two different ideas for two different decks with uh, Aurelia as the commander. Um, slightly less competitive uh, than this. This is probably the close to the best Aurelia deck you're going to get. Um, but uh, I got some interesting ideas. So look for those um, over the next two days. Thank you for watching. Have a good night.